So you can see that the digital multimeter is a very useful tool in troubleshooting your AC circuit. So you see that you can use it to identify components that are not functioning properly and the equipment that are also not functioning properly. Though we'll come to that in later sections of this training. So still on the use of the digital multimeter in troubleshooting your electrical circuitry, let us see what, uh, let us see another circuit, which is uh, what you have on your screen now. So like the earlier one, this is a, a motor circuit, okay, with a very simple control circuitry. So you can see the power circuit, okay, to in the middle of the, the diagram, that is the middle of your screen now. This is the power circuit. And all of this, you can identify the components in this power circuit. So one, we have the fuses, then we have the contactor, and of course, the motor. Then on the control circuitry, we have the transformers, and then we have a simple on and off switch. And that is what is represented on the schematic that you have on your right. So if you are not familiar with schematic, I advise you to check out our training on electrical diagrams, okay? Understanding electrical diagrams. So in that training, the various types of electrical diagrams to include these schematics, they were explained and uh, the various symbols that are used to represent various components in uh, the electrical circuitry, they are also shown in that um, training. So when you go to your right, you will see that the schematic shows all the components that we have in the circuitry. The fuse, the contactor, the electric motor. And on the control side, we have the transformer, the switch, of course, this is the coil of the, the contactor, okay? So now, how do we use the digital multimeter to troubleshoot this circuit? Remember, we are still looking at this circuit when it is uh, live, okay? So I remember too, we can test the circuit when it is dead and when it is uh, live. So we are considering testing the circuit when it is um, live. So like the earlier uh, circuits that we observed, of course, you check the input to the circuit, okay? As you check the input to the circuit, you check the line one to line two, okay? That will give you the line to line voltage, okay? And in our case, as you can see on the screen, what you expect to see is 480 volts since the source is 480. So if you are not getting that amount of voltage, it shows that all the components above this point, okay, some of the components or any of the components above this point may be faulty, which could be either the fuse or the line before the input to diffuse housing or the cubic housing the fuse now your face to face line one line two will give you 480 then line one line three will also give you 480 but in our case it is 415 volts okay because that is the input of face to face in a, a case so whatever is the case in your facility, that is what you have. If the fuse and the line before the fuse, they are all okay. So you have your 418, okay? And, uh, and then if you look to the, the schematic tool, it means that you have tested up to this point, okay? So you can also check these terminals. That is the terminal at the input of your contactor. So if the input of your contactor, you are still having the 415 volts, 
Of course, that means that everything above that point is fine. Okay? Then you can depress that your contactor manually as we earlier explained and check the output. So on checking the output, if there is no output, the principal culprit becomes your contactor. Okay, but if there is output, you expect output to be at this terminal. If there is none, it means that the supply cable to this terminal may be having some challenges or some faults. Okay, maybe it is open somewhere. Okay, so you can now suspect uh, the pass the power cable that is feeding your electric motor. So, but if you have your normal 415 face to face at the motor, it shows that your electric motor needs some further troubleshooting. We will see later how you can troubleshoot the electric motor. But that is on the line. So you can also have problem with the control side of uh, the circuitry. So now, on the control side, what do you have? You have the transformer, which is definitely a step-down transformer. And then you have a switch. So those are the two components in, or two major components in the control circuitry. So when you look at this now, this is H1, H2. This terminal is supposed to have face-to-face -face voltage of your power supply in your system, okay? So which means that we are supposed to have 415, H1, H2. When you probe these two terminals, you are supposed to have 415 volts. If you are not having that 415 volts, remember you have confirmed that everything here is okay. It means that this cable supplying your, your control circuit may be loose at one end or it may be broken at a particular spot, okay, along the line. So it is now left for you to determine where or what is actually wrong with uh, the cable. If it is what would need replacement, of course, you replace it. If it is what you can fix, okay, you can fix, especially if the problem is coming from the terminal. Okay, you can clean up the terminal and uh, firm up that particular terminal if it is loose, okay? Now, you have confirmed that you have input voltage. So if you have your input 415 at H1, H2, it means that S1, S2 is supposed to have the expected output voltage. So let's assume that what is expected to come out from that transformer is 110 volts, okay? If it is 110 volts that is expected to be the output, it means that S1, S2, when you probe it with your digital multimeter at the voltage, AC voltage range, you are supposed to have 110 volts, okay? So when you close this switch, it means that A2, A1 is supposed to have 110 volts. So if you don't have that here, the principal suspect that would be all the components between the contactor coil and the transformer output, which means these lines, the cable, okay, and this switch. So you check them out to see that, to see which particular component is actually causing the problem. But if they are okay, it means that you have your 110 volts here, and your contactor will, the contactor coil will be energized and your contactor is expected to close. So if you have input at A1, A2, and your contactor coil is not energizing, okay, it means that the contactor coil is faulty. Or it is energizing and the contactor is not closing. It means that your contactor is faulty also, okay? So this is a very simple uh, circuit, motor circuit, but the principle in troubleshooting this active circuit is the same, okay? Now, another thing that uh, you can do is to test the circuit while it is uh, dead, okay? Assuming 
you have done your your the life tests why the circuit is powered and then you could not zero in on the problem or you were able to identify that the the you don't have power in a certain section of the the either the control or the power circuit okay so you can go further to do your uh, continuity test okay so on the fuses you can test end to end on each fuse remember you know the composition of a fuse you know that a fuse has a fusing element linking this end to this end okay so on overload it's expected that it should break so when it breaks it means that there is no the power will not be continuous to your contactor as in this case okay so if power is not continuous to your contactor there's no way the contactor will send power to your motor so when you test the continuity by placing one probe here okay and the other here that will give you okay? so that will tell you if that fuse is uh, okay so what you do in testing for continuity you take one of the probe to the lower terminal and then the other probe to the other terminal and then that will give you the continuity tell you if it is continuity if it is continuous i mean to say which means that the meter will peak or if you are in the ohm range okay the resistance range the it will give you almost zero uh, ohms or zero ohms okay so you see that very low resistance so you do that on three phases to be sure that uh, your fuses are okay then you also do that on your the line okay to verify that this line connecting the fuse to your contactor is okay and also the line connecting your your contactor to your motor is okay so it is possible that the the motor is in the feed very far off okay so you may not be able to test both end of the line simultaneously but you know that since the motor uh, the cables are terminated at the motor end which means that it is continuous with the windings okay so you can still test for continuity but there will be some resistance okay so you test between the the cable that is running from that is between line one and line two where the contactor is open between line one and line two and line two and line three okay so if it is continuous it will tell you that it is a uh, continuous okay so you see some level of resistance if it is shorted it will show you zero resistance that shows that shows clearly that there is a uh, a short circuit or there may be a possible short circuit or it is possible that the solution has been compromised somewhere along the line to your electric motor so now in doing that continuity test you can also you are advised to also use this kind of continuity test to use very low resistance range okay because the resistance of the windings they are very very low if you have the milli uh, milli ohms meter i think that will serve us better because you have the actual value of the resistances of each of uh, the windings so when you take from that end when you disconnect from here disconnect the pass of the cable from here okay that is you are freed it from the contactor now so as you read between line one and line two, okay, you have the reading of one of the winding. Okay, it's expected that the reading between here and here and between here and here is supposed to give us the same resistance to tell you that all is okay with uh, the transformer, uh, the electric motor. So line one, line two is supposed to give you the same resistance. Line two, line three, 
line three, line one. Okay, they are supposed to give you the same resistance. So that will tell you clearly that the electric motor and the lines supplying the electric motor from your motor control center is working perfectly. So still on troubleshooting uh, the electrical uh, AC circuit, AC circuit with the digital multimeter. So as you can see on your, your screen, you have the main, that this is the main circuit breaker, okay, into this particular circuit. You see that we have other circuit breakers in the circuit and then uh, some other contactors and the relays, okay. These are some contactors and these are some relays in this particular circuit. So now, for you to be able to ascertain whether this component that you are seeing, they are okay, you need to understand what you should expect from that particular component, okay? Before you be able to use the digital multimeter effectively to determine the functionality of this component. So this is your main circuit breaker. So remember, we said you can carry out two types of tests, okay? One is the dead test and the other one is the live test. The dead test is when you switch off this breaker. And what you can basically do is continuity tests, okay? Then the live test is when you switch on this breaker which means there will be power in the entire circuit. And that will mean that you need to be very careful while carrying out your troubleshooting or your test while the circuit is live. So on this uh, circuit breaker, on this uh, circuit, as you can see, what you do first is to confirm, to verify that there is input power. Once there is input power to your circuitry, you know that the at the required level, if it is 415, you know that you have face-to-face -face 415 at the input. So if you are carrying out live tests, you switch on this, the circuit breaker, and you confirm that you have output that is 415 at the output of uh, the circuit breaker, okay? And then you confirm too that you have the, the input to all of this circuit breaker, you are having that same 415 volts, okay? Also to the input of all of these circuit breaker and then the input of all of these contactors, okay? So it depends on what you expect to come to this uh, release okay so you have to be sure of what you expect to come of this release, uh, come to the input of this release and uh, you have to confirm that you have those level of signals at those inputs and what's expected should also come from the output then your dead test you put this off you can put this one off and then you test for continuity okay, to all of these terminals to show that all these cables supplying all of these, they are okay. Then you close this, all of these breakers and test for continuity to show that these breakers, they are okay. If this continuity test you want to do, you do the same on all of these uh, breakers. Then the contactors too, you do the same for the contactors, okay. And then the signal that you expect at all of these terminal blocks, they are all in your schematic, okay? Your wiring diagram. So you test to see that the output that you expect from this particular circuitry, it is actually there. But individually, you can test these components, whether they are okay, by simply verifying that they have outputs by simply verifying that the, the line into the 
that is the continu the continuity is okay in the uh, the circuit breakers and the contactors okay so that is what you can verify in this particular